Hello, this is Robert Caudell, and you are listening to Think on This. Today I am reading Matthew 13, verses, uh, just one verse, verse 33. He told them another parable, the kingdom of heaven is like that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. Okay, so concentrate on this phrase right here. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. Um... Uh, picture leaven is just a uh, an older archaic word for the word yeast. Um, if you've ever done any kind of baking with yeast, you notice that it it, it grows. It's it's um, kind of like a uh, I guess the best way to put it is kind of like bacteria, but it's good bacteria. It grows. It expands. Um, that's what makes bread rise. Um, and so this what we see here. It's a similar lesson than. Uh, similar to the lesson that we talked about yesterday concerning the mustard seed. Um, but leaven, sometimes when you look at it in the Bible, is usually pictured as some sort of uh, evil uh, type of connotation to it. That's what it, what they think that it usually has. But um, it's it's not that's not necessarily the case here. Um, in fact, it's just the opposite because what Jesus is uh, talking about talking about how, like the mustard seed, it blesses all that it comes in contact with. So um, life that's centered around the gospel blesses people. Um, you know, obviously people get saved by it, and then also those who are saved affect those around them, either by leading them to Christ or treating them the way Christ uh, treated those when he uh, had his earthly ministry. And so... Um, the kingdom of heaven is essentially growing, you know, kind of like leaven, kind of like the the mustard, uh, the mustard seed shrub. Um, it's growing to the point where it affects everyone. And um, dispensationally, and that's what I am. I'm a dispensationalist. Um, if if you haven't figured that out. Um, the kingdom of heaven manifests itself, obviously, throughout all of history, it's God's kingdom, but it manifests itself differently in each dispensation. So what you have here is um, Jesus talking about the future and the present as things are fully being, uh, we're all, it's all working towards ultimately what God has in mind in the end. And I don't mean to sound progressive, but, um, you know, the church is being established right now and and by church i i mean people once people get saved right now they are now a part of the family of god they are now part of the church um and that's what this is this is the age of the church this is the time where the church is uh reaching out to the world um sharing the gospel with people um so that that the numbers are adding to the church um, then once you know, once the last person gets saved that God has in mind, then that's the end of the church age. And then right before the millennial kingdom gets ushered in, where you see a physical earthly manifestation of the kingdom taking place, where Jesus is physically on the throne, there will be this time of judgment where there will be additional people who get saved, but they won't necessarily be church saints. They'll obviously be spiritually regenerated. They'll get saved, but... Unlike the church age, it'd probably be even similar to the Old Testament prophets. The Holy Spirit's not going to indwell those believers. He'll he'll still be active in regenerating them, but um, the point of the church in this time frame is the Holy Spirit's within every believer. The Holy Spirit's within every believer, but the Holy Spirit is still an active agent in regeneration. There's no place you can't go where God is not because he's everywhere. He's always present he's always um he's he's all he, he, there's no like i said there's no place you can't go where he's not um he's infinite and um so the full realization like as far this this these parables can apply to the here and now but it also has a future connotation where everything gets ultimately fully realized and that, i think that's probably uh more true than even you know currently um but we're part of the kingdom we're citizens of the kingdom of heaven 
uh, that's our citizenship. Um, we're, we're not of this world, but we're, um, we're we're citizens of heaven. Which, um, in which case, if we're if we live like citizens of heaven, that's how we impact other people. Um, you know, by our influence, by what God is doing in us, working out into the world, and um, sad to say, you know, the the church hasn't been doing too well in the last decade. In the last few decades, I mean, there's plenty of places called churches that are growing exponentially, huge, massive, um, some in the millions, some in. Um, but it's it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the church. It's people claiming the name of Christ, but they have not been re- they have not been born again they have not been regenerated they are essentially um uh empty sepulchers and so um the kingdom of heaven is supposed to be uh growing and basically absorbing all that it comes in contact with um and that's 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 talking about us you know it's not talking about the physical place of heaven it's talking about the citizens of heaven this is how heaven is going to this is how the citizens of heaven are going to affect the world around it, and I think that's important to keep in mind as we go through this. Um, I know obviously some people there's a there's a lot of people, especially uh, a lot of reformed people that would disagree with what I'm saying as far as the dispensational concept goes. But if we can agree on one thing, we can agree that Christians are supposed to be making a difference in the lives of other people, and um, Christians are supposed to be doing what's right. So. Let's remember that as we think on this. This is Robert Caudill. Thank you.